Hello there and welcome back to part 12 of my good old asteroids tutorial and in this one we're going to cover um, adding in the rocks it's really is the only thing we need um, left to make sort of something that looks a little bit like an asteroids game so we're just going to add in some uh, small rocks that get spawned in when each of the asteroids uh, get destroyed and we'll try and make sure that the basic functionality of the game continues to work as in it finishes when all of the rocks are um, destroyed and a new wave gets made so let's get straight to it we're going to start by um, getting some of the assets that we need. So we could actually just use the original uh, Meteor Brown and just make it smaller and rotate it. Um, but we did download most of the Space Shooter stuff, so feel free to follow along either way. Um, I'm just going to take this Medium Brown um, Meteor from the Space Shooter one, and uh, it's just a slightly different shape, so um, it hopefully will uh, look okay as we make it into rocks. Let's start by creating ourselves our brand new scene for this rock. So I'm just going to say new scene. I'm going to say other node because I want it to be an area 2D. So um, select that area 2D as the root node. And as we did before, we just add the child node, which is the actual sprite. And we'll drag on the um, medium sprite onto that. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the other one. I don't need to change anything else, but we do need the collision shape. So I'm going to use this um, collision polygon 2D again, and we're just going to add points to this. So I'll just zoom in so I can get them. So I'm just going to click and uh, drag, uh, sorry, just click on each of the corners there so that we have um, something that approximates the shape of this polygon. And then we just need to make sure that we um, save this scene as something useful. So I'm going to call it um, Rock and hit save. I'm also um, going to make sure that I uh, call the root node Rock as well. I forgot to do that just to begin with. And I'm just going to save that again so that we've got our um, scene that we can instance in um, when we need to. And I, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed this. I'm not sure um, if there's any... Um, reason why it would happen but um, in testing this I noticed that uh, when when we shoot the um, bullet hits the player and uh, we never really solved that problem but it never really became a problem um, I remember in the end of the last video I was playing this fine and I didn't have an issue but if you do find this it's a, a really simple fix the bottom line is that the, um, the player if I um, can go to the player script so the player script um, Basically, if anything enters its area, including the bullet, um, it will um, emit the player killed signal and um, and then it will destroy the player. So we definitely don't want that to happen until it, in, unless it's um, an asteroid. So what we can just say is that we can say if it's not the bullet. So the way you do that is you say if not is... Um, if not area is bullet. So we did this um, earlier on. Um, we said if a particular area was the bullet, then we could destroy. Um, this time we're saying um, not this, so anything um, except the bullet. And those two um, lines just get done only if it um, if it's not the bullet. So it'll be the asteroids or the rocks that will hit the player, meaning that we'll emit the signal and uh, Q3. So testing this now, you'll see that um, weirdly um, everything works. We can shoot, and it looks like the bullets are appearing um, right in the middle of the player. Um, and I not sure what I've changed, but um, you'll see that the asteroid hit and the player was destroyed. So that's that minor problem fixed. We'll move on to getting these rocks working. So the concept I'm going to introduce is um, basically inheritance. The uh, There's a lot of the functionality that we just need. I mean, we could copy and paste um, everything in here from the asteroids to the rock and feel free to do that if you really want to. You'll have issues, obviously, with the, with the signals and uh, what happens because we want something slightly different to happen when the bullet hits the, um, the asteroid as opposed to when it hits the rock. So um, rather than just copy and paste, what we can do is we can give this one a class name. So if we... Uh, class underscore name and say asteroid and we'll use the convention of it capitals so this just gives this um this script um this class name so that rather than extending from area 2d um what we're going to do is extend from asteroid um for a rock which means everything here will be um more or less um copied so uh, the the process will run and the ready will run and everything else will run as as expected 
So if we uh, go to the rock scene right now, we want to create ourselves a script for this rock, but we want it to extend this time um, from um, Asteroid. So uh, I'm going to choose the location and go about direction into scripts, and then we'll call it rock.jd, which sounds fine. And then uh, empty template, and this inherits. Um, we're actually just going to say asteroid because we're going to inherit from the actual asteroid class that we've already made. When we click create right now, and then we save this, um, we're going to leave this everything completely blank and uh, and get this working and see if it works um, as expected. But we'll need to spawn some rocks in. Um, when an asteroid is killed. And if you remember um, previously, the uh, game scene has the uh, game script, which has an event which is fired when an asteroid is destroyed, where we play a sound and we shake the camera and we add one to the score. Um, what we should do is we should um, spawn in some rocks at this point right here. So we're going to need to um, reference this scene. So uh, just as we've done before on ready var, and we'll just say um, rock, and we'll use this uh, exactly what we did before. We'll preload the uh, rock scene so that we're able to um, instance um, one of the rocks. Then I will go down to this on asteroid destroyed. If you can see from the um, the um, issue here is when we destroy the asteroid, we've got no idea where the asteroid is, so we've got no idea where we need to play the uh, where we need to create those. Um, those uh, rocks. So we'll need to kind of adapt this signal that we do when, when, when an asteroid is destroyed so that we can find out a position when the, um, when the asteroid is actually destroyed. So if we go into the asteroid script, it's slightly... Um, Godot makes this quite easy. So all we need to do is um, we've got the, the um, on asteroid area entered, which is um, the area 2D signal. But we emit our own custom signal, if you remember. So we say asteroid destroyed that's hooked up into the game. And all we need to do is we need to pass in um, something. So we'll pass in a global position. And this will be a vector 2 that we'll pass when we emit the signal. If we uh, save this, you'll need to go back now into this... Um, this game script. So if I go and find the game script again, so this um, on asteroid destroyed is a signal we just emitted, and um, all we need to do now is um, we'll just uh, make a variable. Uh, we'll call this pause, I think, um, and then we'll use this. Will get filled up with um, the information that's sent when we pass the signal. So pause should be a vector two when it comes here, um, and then all we need to do is um, create the rocks at that particular pause. So on this. Um, on asteroid destroyed where we've got this position so we should be able to use this um, these uh, these lines uh, here um, I'm just gonna comment out the um, this is checking to see if uh, there's no asteroids left however um, we also want to use the rocks uh, include those in the in the count otherwise um, otherwise it's not going to be a very good game if there's still rocks flying around so uh, I'll comment those out and then we'll just do um, we'll just instance one of the rocks so we just want to do a quick uh, loop with um, three it's going to loop three times and we're just going to make a new a new rock and we'll make it an instance of the um, rock scene and then we want this um, new rocks position to be equal to the position that we pass in when we um, when we pass in the signal um, once we've also added the uh, add the child uh, new rock to the, the uh, scene so um, that should be enough to test so just give this a quick test, make sure it works. So hitting the play, hit the rock, and the asteroid, and three smaller rocks come out. Uh, you notice that they're also um, moving. They've done all of the stuff that was happening inside of the act actual original asteroid script, despite the fact that the rock script contains nothing other than um, extending asteroid. And that's pretty cool. Uh, what we do need, however, is we need a way that we can... Um, have them destroyed because if you play it right now they don't actually get destroyed when they get hit by the bullet. So we'll just go into this um, rock scene and what we need to do is we need to hook up the um, the signals, this um, area entered signal to our rock script so that we're able to um, tell the game that, we, um, that we've been killed. So I'm going to just uh, double click on this area entered, we'll connect uh, straight up to the rock, so this on rock area entered 
and we'll click connect. Um, this will uh, just allow us to create a custom signal that we can send up to the uh, game. So we'll call this um, rock uh, killed. And so all we need to do is um, emit that signal. So we'll use emit signal and then choose the uh, rock killed, which is somewhere down this list. There we go. So uh, this will emit the signal and it'll be up to the game to make sure that we, um, we are listening for the signal because there's going to be lots of rocks on the scene, obviously. So let's um, go to that game script and when uh, you'll see we did this with the um, asteroids when we spawn in the asteroids what we need to do is just make sure that we connect up um, a specific function for every asteroid we connect up a specific function that um, it runs when that one is actually destroyed when it receives that custom message so we need to make sure that we do that for all of the uh, rocks as well and we'll do that um, just for every single asteroid uh, sorry, every single rock. So we'll just say new rock dot connect like we did before, and we'll connect the um, rock killed to ourself, and we'll connect it to a function that we haven't written yet called on rock killed. Um, I'm going to copy that so I don't get this wrong, and just create that function right now. So um, func and then control p. And what we want it to do is um, basically uh, score plus and uh, shake, just maybe like we do with the other one. So um, when we destroy the um, current asteroid right now, I'm actually going to copy all of those and just um, paste them in. So we'll shake the camera, play the sound, and this time we'll put the score up by, I don't know, 20 instead of, um, instead of 50 for one of the big ones. So let's just see if this works. So um, when we shoot that, yeah. So everything's working. Uh, the only problem is that we've not uh, we've not killed the um, the the rocks. Uh, we have uh, made the score go up and everything, but we just not killed the rocks. So let's make sure that we've done that. We just need to um, go to this uh, rock script, and then in here we just want to make sure that um, when anything hits this uh, that we um, get rid of the um, get rid of this uh, object so we'll just queue free this object um, there's a good chance that it's going to be um, the bullet too and what we could do is we could just say um, area dot queue free and this may cause a problem because if it's the player um, that could be an issue so um, we might need to check that it is actually the bullet before we do it but I'll test it to make sure that it works Um, so uh, everything disappears um, and that's probably because there's rocks that are overlapping each other and that signal gets sent so we do need to actually check to see if this is the bullet but it's pretty easy to do all we need to do is just do a simple if check so if the area if the thing that hits it is a bullet because um, we did that class earlier on and then I'm just going to take those three and just tab them in. I'm going to get rid of the pass as well, the bottom, because we don't need it anymore. So one more test, make sure that this actually works. I love when you get problems, it's so much more fun. So we see that they're actually, um, the rocks are being destroyed as well. We're getting the camera shake and we're getting the score going up, hopefully. Um, the score wasn't going up, but... Um, uh, just because simply I hadn't told it to. Um, so I'm just going to copy this line as well. Um, I forgot to copy it in. So when the score goes up, you do want to just uh, update the label as well. So maybe that'd be a better um, to do this um, at a different time, but we'll leave it where it is. And hopefully this will work now. Um, so it's interesting to have these problems because uh, this is what happens. So we see the score going up. So every time we hit one of the rocks as well, we go up by 20. And um, there we go. So that's not bad. Our last, um, our last major issue is uh, we do need to spawn or respawn another wave. Um, the when we did this before, we basically said um, when we destroyed an asteroid, we uh, we managed to 
um, take the score down by one and then we would um, make sure that the score was, uh, if it was zero, then we would spawn another wave. Uh, the issue here is that um, we're spawning in both the asteroids and and the rocks and we want to make sure that they're both destroyed before it does actually move to the next wave. So I'm going to do this the uh, the hackiest way that I know how. Um, the this number asteroids left uh, value um, just goes up every time we spawn an asteroid and uh, down every time we destroy an asteroid. What we could do is we can also um, literally just make it go up every time we spawn a rock. Uh, so number of asteroids left plus equals one. So we'll add one on to the number of asteroids left. So this value will contain effectively the number of items uh, that are destroyable on the screen at any one time, if that kind of makes sense. And that way, when this value equals zero, then we will spawn a new wave. It might happen um, here, uh, so we can leave this uh, these three lines of code. It might happen on an asteroid being destroyed, um, but it's distinctly un unlikely because you've just spawned in three rocks. The most likely place that this will happen, if I control X this out, is um, when a rock is killed. So all you'll do is we'll paste what we had earlier um, in the asteroid one. We do need to make sure that we are taking this value down by one, however. So every time we destroy an asteroid, it does need to go down by one. Because when we spawn in an asteroid, you'll see that we do make it go up by one. So asteroids make it go up by one and rocks make it go up by one uh, over here. Uh, but um, when we kill them, we should check that there are none left. Um, I just need to test this to make sure it works because my head kind of hurts thinking about whether this is um, this is going to work or not. So we'll give it a test and if there are any problems, we'll fix them. So I'm hoping you guys maybe uh, spotted my error. Um, the issue is uh, it didn't work. And the reason for that is because when I did kill a rock, I forgot to take that number down. So we do need to uh, remove one from that number. So um, number asteroids left minus equals uh, one. And there is a good chance that, uh, <laughs> that this will work. I'll give it a quick test and we'll try and solve any problems if there are any. So there we have it. We have a game that uh, pretty much looks like asteroids. We managed to have waves spawn in when we um, kill all of the rocks that are on the scene. Uh, the waves get larger and larger and the score goes up and when we get hit by something the game goes back to the menu. That's a full working asteroids game right there. That was um, a problem filled um, video and uh, we finished off the rocks and we have pretty much a functional um, a functional game of asteroids so I hope you've enjoyed the series. I'm not sure if I'll continue um, with this series, I might uh, introduce particle systems and something else. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, if you've got this far, well done. Congratulations. You have a functional um, functional game of asteroids in Godot and you've probably learned a heap of stuff along the way. So um, keep up programming and I hope you uh, are able to make some cool games in the future. Thanks and I'll see you again later.